Previously, we discussed in detail how GST helps in elimination of cascading effect of taxes, and in the next few lectures, we'll try to get an insight as to how it simplifies the complex indirect tax system by elimination of the numerous taxes levied on different events. But before we dwell into the same, let's try and understand the concept of goods and service tax in detail. No specific definition of GST is provided anywhere under the X, so let's try and derive a definition based on general understanding of the laws. GST is a comprehensive destination-based consumption tax levied at every stage of value addition. To understand every feature of GST in detail, let's break down this definition further. Here, the word comprehensive means including and dealing with all. As the name goods and service tax specifies, it's a tax charged on both goods and services at the same time, and there's no segregation as there was in the earlier regime. Next term is destination-based consumption tax, which signifies that tax is charged at the place of final consumption of goods and taxes. Earlier tax was charged at the place of sale, but now the power to charge tax rests in the hands of taxing authority having jurisdiction in the final place of consumption. It's one of the major changes introduced within GST regime. That's the reason GST faced criticism and objection from various states on its introduction. Many states which are the producing hubs of the country, like Maharashtra, Gujarat, and Tamil Nadu, initially oppose GST as they'll lose major share of their tax revenue to the consumer states. Let's discuss a few examples to determine where the tax will be collected in different scenarios, like interstate trading, interstate trading, and imports-exports. In example number one, we'll discuss intrastate trading. If a manufacturer is based in Maharashtra and he sells his goods to a person also located within the boundaries of Maharashtra, then by obvious reason, Maharashtra will collect the taxes on such transactions, as it is the consumer state as well as the producer state. In example number two, we'll discuss interstate trading. If a manufacturer based in Maharashtra enters into a contract to sell his goods to a person in Haryana, here Maharashtra will be the producer state and Haryana will be the consumer state. As the final place of consumption is based in Haryana, taxing authorities will collect the taxes. As we've already covered domestic trading in the earlier examples, example number three and four will cover imports and exports respectively, i.e. when one amongst the supplier and recipient is located outside the boundaries of India. In example number three, we'll discuss imports. If the manufacturer is located in Australia and he sells his goods to a consumer situated in India, then the tax will be collected by the Indian government as the place of final consumption is in India, which makes imports taxable. In example number four, we'll discuss exports. Let's take a situation in total opposite of what we discussed in example three. The manufacturer is located in India and the final consumer to whom the goods are supplied is located in Australia. Here, final place of consumption is located in Australia, which is outside the jurisdiction of Indian taxing authorities. Therefore, such a transaction will not be taxable, which makes exports non-taxable under GST. If we analyze taxing systems of such exports and imports, we can conclude that GST also provides a great support system for domestic producers and traders. Making the exports from India non-taxable gives them a competitive edge as there are no added cost of taxes in the prices of such exported products. On the other hand, imports which are taxed in the same way as domestic products will be costlier as they will attract custom duty along with such taxes. Now, let's try to understand what it means when we say that it is charged at every stage. GST is a multi-stage tax, which basically means that it's levied at every stage of the supply chain. We all know that production cycle of an item includes various stages like raw material procurement, manufacturing, warehousing and distribution, and final consumption. On every such step, when goods change hands from one person to another, GST will be charged. For explanation purpose, let's take the same example of manufacturer as cotton shirts. Initially, manufacturer bought the raw material and raw material was transferred from supplier to manufacturer. The manufactured goods were transferred to wholesaler or manufacturer who then supplied the goods to the retailer or the final consumer. On every such occasion of transfer of goods, GST will be levied. Last feature left to be discussed is the value added. On every stage discussed earlier, certain value is added to the goods. In the given example, an extra amount of 50, 50, and 30 rupees is added in manufacture, distribution, and final consumption stages, respectively. 
GST is charged on such value added. In general, course of business tax is paid on total cost of goods and services, but the actual tax liability come down on tax on such value added. This actual tax liability is calculated after deducting the input tax credit from the taxes paid on outward supplies.